a very good afternoon to all the kids on the kids drive this afternoon. Yes, and so I'm sitting in the bush at the moment. We are trying to follow up on a male leopard uh, that has been uh, pretty much injured due to a snare. And uh, of course the vets and the Sabi Sands have been out here now and we are just trying to relocate on them. So yes, but anyway, good afternoon to all the kids. My name is Cedric and behind the camera with me on Wendy, we've got a panda. So thanks for joining. And uh, well, it is a warm day today and I'm looking forward to this uh, drive. But yes, driver uh, joining us on our safari this afternoon. On safari, we've got uh, Amy and uh, Muscles and Paul. And uh, yes, our director for this afternoon is Nadine. All right, so we're gonna just try and follow up on this mail. Unfortunately, we are just stuck with a little bit of time here. So what we're gonna try and do for the time being, I think while well, we're gonna try and search for this young male uh, leopard around this area, because unfortunately at this point in time, uh, time is very, very important. So I think I might, uh, yeah. Uh, Nadine, are we gonna, yeah, let's go cue the first uh, virtual safari. What do you think, Nadine? All right, let's go to that uh, uh, virtual safari clip from the 1st of April. Well, I'm just sitting here on the side of the road at the dump site where the local gardeners collected all of the, the grass cuttings from the day's lawn mowing. <laughs> I'm only joking here. We have got part of a rhino midden and essentially what's happened here you can see that this area here has been very well processed by dung beetles um, these little holes or pock marks all around are where dung beetles have physically been in rolled a ball and moved it away from the site the, the telecoprates they would have physically accessed the dung and rolled it away there will be a number of dung beetles that live down underneath this rhino midden because this midden can can stand and last and be defecated on for years and years and years so the dung beetles might go down they're called the paracoprids they go right underneath and they live in the bottom and when they hatch they just come up into a pile of poo sounds like an idyllic world for a dung beetle so this is definitely a little bit older um, more in our summer months uh, when the dung beetles were very very obvious and a little bit further over here a lot more dung but this dung doesn't seem to have been as well processed. You can see over here, it's actually still balls of dung and it's still quite wet underneath. So nothing has been moving in here. Obviously there's lots of insects and things like that, but they don't quite do the same job as that of dung beetles that really just sort the dung out, squish it down and uh, make it look more like that. So essentially what's happened over here big male rhino would be walking along he'd probably have a territorial route that comes down a game path in this way it's actually a road comes down the game path he walk into his midden and you can actually see the disturbance over here and he'll turn and he'll start to defecate behind him because that's where the bottom is he'll start to kick kick and kick and by doing this he's breaking up those balls of dung which uh, essentially come out for the most part, very much like that, uh, until they get kicked apart. You can actually see that there's a proper big piece of grass in there. So they get kicked and kicked and kicked, and you can actually see there's a few fresh pieces over here. And in doing that, he puts the scent of his dung on the back of his legs. Now, when this guy ends up carrying on walking, he'll walk and he'll walk, and you can obviously only have so many poos in a day, if you're a rhino. And so he has these only at specific markings on his territory, but he can get that scent on his feet. And as he walks along, he'll do that little wheel spin, sort of looks like a quad bike wheel spinning on the side of the road. He'll, he'll do that drag on the side of the road and he'll urinate. So in by doing that further down, he's done this sort of wheel spin marking. There'll be dung traces from his dung on his feet there'll be urine and it'll turn the earth over. Every 20, 30, 40 meters, that sort of thing can happen. And that is how he demarcates his territory. Any male that walks into this area will walk into oof, a scent trail of a big male. And obviously if he doesn't do so, 
that scent trail disappears. So the constant reapplying of the dung and the urine to his territory is imperative for white rhinos with nostrils that are bigger than my fingers if I do that perfect for them to smell and obviously their face is low down to the ground they know if it's occupied or unoccupied and so this is essentially the Facebook of the bush the male comes here to defecate to claim to uh, mark his status and then females will come to this place and actually they'll try and sort of get involved by defecating in and around you quite often find around a rhino dunk pile you find some that hasn't been broken doesn't seem to be too obvious at this specific one but sometimes you'll find dung balls that have been deposited around and those are from females or potentially even subordinate males that are coming through to drink and they're not going to defecate like that because that is a sign of a dominant male and if another male does that here he really is asking for a proper proper fight which will happen because that rhino with those big nostrils will trail him and find him and then well then that is basically a declaration of war all righty then look at this we've got a big male elephant an elephant bull that's in uh, full must at the moment uh, is wet behind his back legs and uh, you can see his temporal glands is leaking quite a bit and we can also pick up on the smell of this uh, bull in must luckily it's nice and relaxed usually they get quite uh, aggressive testosterone is really high and then they tend to start chasing things around and they become quite angry elephants but it seems like this uh, beautiful male is uh, nice and relaxed beautiful boy nice big body nice tusks on him and uh, you know, he's not too phased about our presence but yeah elephant bulls in mass so you usually see when they go get to about 18 19 20 years old so they start going into must, but they can only really hold the musting period up to about five days, five, six days, um, until they get to the age of 40. <clears throat> Once they get to the age of 40 and 40 and above, then they can actually control the musting period up to 15 days. So you'll find elephants above uh, 40 years old become more, or pretty much more successful in finding a female that's in heat. And this male, I think he looks like he could be easier close to the age of 40, 45 years old. There's indentations on his head, to the size of his body. So yes, beautiful seeing this right here at uh, Juma Private Game Reserve. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
just uh, found these two big male lions that chased off the black dam males this morning from Torchwood into Juma. And uh, this is one of them. The other one is just behind you. I'm going to quickly try. Oh, very dark manes. Look at that. Dark, dark manes. The other one is just here. Right, let's go and try here. Oh, that was good. Yeah, this guy's big. It wasn't comfortable. Don't look at him in his eyes, huh? Yeah. As you can see, very dark man. So these are one of the one of the males, very old male. I'm not too sure exactly. Right. Very big males. And they this morning chased the two black dam males, uh, dominant males, yeah, out from Torchwood into Juma. And I'll just quickly track down these boys, these two males. And I'm not too sure who they are. They say maybe they're the Mutley Mutley males. There's one older one and the other one's a very dark mane. Not too relaxed. All right, so everyone, uh, what's happening now? Yes, I am uh, racing at the moment. Uh, we have found, we found Marib. We just, we just located on him now. We just put him in uh, into one of the vehicles that's ahead of us. We're heading straight towards a uh, hurry guy now to where uh, the surgeon is waiting, the surgeon, the veterinary surgeon is waiting there and then they're gonna go and stitch him up. So, um, and if you don't know who Marebs is, he's a young male leopard, they got caught in a snare uh, maybe about a week and a half, or actually a week ago, and a bad score, bad injury, got uh, the snare taken, uh, removed off of him, it's a piece of wire, removed off of him. Um, they did treat him in the beginning, but it looked like they needed more treatment, so we darted him now and uh, we actually got him located on him and now we're pretty much uh, transporting him straight to uh, one of the houses here where the surgeon is waiting because he has to go get a gas, uh, oxygen mask and all that. So the, the procedure takes quite some time. So yeah, we're going to try and race here now. Oh, thank I'm so glad we found him because I was really worried because at the, when they darted him, he ran off and we couldn't find him for a good, what, 10 minutes. But yeah, all right, let's go to the weather. It is warm indeed. Hello everyone. My name is Amy and behind the camera today with me is of course in Paul. Yes indeed and it has been a busy one today. We've been all over the show here on Juma. Uh, it is good to be out behind the wheel after on safari. Uh, for those of you who did join us there, welcome back and we're actually making our way down towards Shududu and Nene where that sighting was this morning to check up on that and what's happening so as you would have heard from Cedric he is up there with Maribs um, and the whole thing that's happening up there at the moment so I'm going to be following up on the sightings if that does um, sort of wrap up a little bit later uh, he can come take over from me the side or however I'll just chat to him and see what he'd like to do um, but from here I also want to check in on the other sighting we have with that black down male and the Nyala carcass but I thought I'm very interested to see if Shadulu's hoisted this kill, what else is happening so um, that is why I've headed down this way first but otherwise I hope everyone has had a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining us once again on our sunset drive I'm excited it's gonna be a wonderful feline Friday afternoon it was a great morning I think it's only gonna continue and it really is a lovely temperature so it was really really hot today um, but this is my favorite time of year in the bush 
I just love it. I wish it was like this the entire all year round. It gets really nice and warm in the day but the mornings are a little bit chilly and it starts to cool down in the afternoon which is a really big difference in comparison to earlier in the year. Tracy, hello, you are nine years old and you are looking forward to this afternoon. Well, yes, boys and girls, it is going to be a fantastic afternoon and I'm excited to show you some cats and maybe a few other things along the way. I'm not sure. The bush will give us what it wants to, but I'm always open to even some of the smaller things that also make the bush really exciting. But we are on our way to these two uh, leopards, a mother and her son. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that they are still around. Now, boys and girls, a leopard is one of my favorite cats. For those of you who may not know what a leopard looks like. It is a beautiful cat and I'm sure that if we do manage to show you one this afternoon you are going to really enjoy it. Now it's just coming up after this intersection where these roads meet. So what we're gonna do is when I get to the off-roading tracks that I took this morning we're just gonna go nice and slowly. It's very important that we don't move too quickly uh, we don't want to give the animals a fright. We also are going off road, so we need to be as sensitive as possible to the environment, what we're driving on. Now there's a few possibilities of what we could find. We could find it exactly the same as we left it this morning. Um, and that is basically Shadulu and Nene on the ground with the impala um, carcass. They killed an impala this morning and like I like to explain to, to the boys and girls watching is that these cats can't go to the grocery store like we can to buy their meat and their food. They have to kill it themselves and that is why they kill things um, to eat like impala. So it's coming up soon, the, the site, so I'm just going to keep a lookout to make sure that I don't miss it. It is quite thick in the area. Michael, you are 11 years old and you want to know when was the first time that I saw a leopard? You know what, Michael? I can't remember. I think I must have been about 11 or 12 years old. If I actually remember, you know, a, a sighting that, that we had in one of the national parks in South Africa. But it was a very long time ago and also as much as I loved the bush um, throughout my life, I don't think I appreciated my first leopard sighting as much as I would today. <laughs> All right, I do see some tracks here. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to take the car into low range. make sure that we get the right spot yeah these do look like tracks what's also important is that when we're going off road that we use the same tracks that we go in and out of as to not make too much of an impact Paul did you see the tracks there I'm just I'm just having a look at everyone sorry <laughs> I'm just going to turn around quickly. I think it is back there. Mm -hmm. 
All right, yeah, it is back there. I just saw the marula tree that I recognized from this morning. So just as we get into the sighting everyone, we're going to send you over to Okakuya to have a look at what's happening there in Namibia. on safari. Hello everyone, we have arrived here at the sighting 
and there is indeed still a leopard around. Is that good, Mpo? There we go. I told you we may be able to show you a leopard today, boys and girls. And there we have Miss Shudulu. And she has come to rest in the shade of this bush willow tree. Now, earlier this morning, there were actually two leopards here, everybody. Right now I can only see one and this is the mom so her little boy is around here as well somewhere and now we can see how heavy she's panting and yes it's hot but I think she's also been eating a little bit of her food so now she's got some pressure on her belly and so her mouth is going <laughs> quite fast Jade, you'd like to know if I'm scared of any animals? Ooh, I'm not a fan of creepy crawlies. I'm not terrified. I don't have any phobias, but I'm not exactly going to put a spider on my hand and, and think that's fun. <laughs> Jade, I wonder if you're scared of any animals. What ones would scare you? Um, I also don't really like bats. Um, bats in a room. So bats are small little nocturnal creatures. They come out at night and some of them eat fruit, some of them eat insects. But I don't like when there's a bat inside my house or inside my room. I'm always scared they're going to fly into my bed while I'm sleeping. I'm so happy to see that she is still here. I'm sure Nene, which is the name of her son, is he around here as well somewhere. Last time he was in the shade of the termite mound this morning. Maybe he's found another spot under the trees. I still need to scan properly here with my binoculars to see if we can spot him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually a lot closer than we think. He's just very well camouflaged. And camouflage is a very fancy way of saying blended in to their surroundings or the environment. You can see everyone. Look at those ears. Do you see how they're flicking back and forth? Also, every now and again, she twitches her body, she flicks her tail, and that's because of all the flies. There are lots and lots of flies that are around, and they land on her and they tickle and irritate her a little bit, so she needs to try and get rid of them best she can. Ava, you'd like to know how old these leopards are, so, oh, there comes Nene. He was in the shade of the termite mound. He's doing a bit of stretching or something there. I actually can see more of him than you can, sorry, but we, there's his face, there we go. So Nene, the one, the young one that we can see coming, he's Shadudu's son, and he's about 15 months old. And then Mum. I don't actually know exactly, but she's an older uh, leopardess. Oh wow, look at that everyone. Maybe 8 to 10 years old. Nadine, if you can just confirm she did his age for me, please. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, that was a bit sore, boy. He's like, oh, sorry, mom. 
You know, you're not a baby anymore. Those teeth hurt. Alright, so she is a Shadulu. Nadine just checked me. She's six years old. It's actually a little bit younger. I thought about eight, but she's actually six. So Nene is just headed over back to the carcass there. Okay. Uh, thanks, Nadine. I did think she was a little bit older, so she is ten, um, which was my suspicion. This is absolutely wonderful. Oh my word. Oh, strong boy. Wow. And what's happened is that those legs of that impala have gone extremely stiff. So because the, the, the animal has died, there's no more blood flowing and it goes into what's very fancy called rigor mortis, which is basically post-death hardening all the muscles stiffen up they're not moving anymore so that impala actually looks quite funny there now its legs are straight its neck is also bent and it's sort of frozen in time in that way I think what I'm going to do Mumpo is actually just pull forward and you can get a nice, I've got quite a nice gap here. There we go, that's a little bit of a better gap. Um, sorry Nadine, can you go again with the uh, name and the question there? Sorry, all species. Uh, you in northern Juma, uh, is it any more from the east and the west uh, in Juma? Hannah, I'm going to get your question right now. I'm just going to give a quick what update on the radio. Uh, I want to I want to cross over to Juma. Yeah, A firm, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, afternoon. Uh, confirm uh, your own lock of uh, Shidulu or Montpisi Joint Chanyama. Yeah, A firm, I'm on lock here with Ingwe's uh, static same position as this morning of Zoe's. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll join you, Nana. Copy that, make your way. Hannah, you'd like to know if, um, you know, why leopards don't hunt. In, in groups or in a pride like leopard, uh, like lions do and they're just different types of cats so Hannah what we refer to that is that they have a different type of social structure which is just a very fancy way to say they they spend time differently so so lions like each other's company they like to spend time as a sort of the females and the youngsters all together and the females the sisterhood will um, often hunt together or we'll have males join up and they'll hunt together whereas with leopards they have adapted to be able to live a solitary so everything about them is all about concealment about camouflage about staying hidden the best way that they can 
and that is because they've adapted to live in much denser areas than lions. They tend to stay in thicker habitats, in trees, they can climb trees really well um, and so they ha are able to use a lot of ambush tactics which lions use as well um, and so they've, they live a solitary lifestyle. Whereas lions, because they're a lot bigger, they're a lot stronger, um, they are a threat to lots of the animals out here and so they don't mind being in the open a little bit more hunting on the savannas on the plains different areas that sort of thing and because they've got strength in numbers as well um, they can take down larger animals so you know if, if leopards and lions were exactly the same there would be a lot of competition between them and although they do compete for for food sources and that sort of thing actually um, they've adapted to 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 specialize in different things which means they can both survive out here in the bush so if they were both specialists in the same thing we would have far fewer leopards and lions around All right, everyone, well, we are not going anywhere, but uh, you are going to head over to Cedric for an update about Marips. Thank you so much, Amy. And yes, just a quick update for everybody on Marips. Um, I am sitting here at uh, uh, what uh, Gary Gate at uh, one of the houses here because the veterinary surgeon. It's actually two, two vets, uh, one veterinary surgeon, uh, interim. Uh, intern, sorry, and um, of course the Sabi Sand people inside here, and Tristan Dix, Panda, and myself. We're all inside there. We're all just kind of trying to assist there, and uh, we're just watching exactly what's happening. Uh, so far, the wound is looking very bad. Um, they said, "Look, it's not going to be too bad if, we, if they can keep uh, that wound of the of the, of the male leopard closed. So they're going to try and staple him properly closed, uh, just like Tamangumi. The same veterinary surgeon that actually uh, fixed up uh, Tamangumi is here as well. So she knows exactly what she's doing. She's been through this and she's top top notch. And uh, well, I think Marepsi is definitely uh, and a good uh, watch and everything. So." So, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Reyes. Yes, uh, I do appreciate it. I think uh, I do apologize. I'm still in a t shirt at the moment. Uh, Panda as it hasn't got really much that he brought with. Uh, we've been with Marips the whole day, um, keeping an eye on him until the vets came in and all that. So, I didn't get time to really change and all that. So, I do apologize about my t shirt. Um, but other than that, uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm got, uh, I've got a good feeling about this. I think uh, at the end of the day, I think Marepsi is going to pull through for uh, with this whole situation. He's got good care at the moment. He's going to get some antibiotics. They're busy cleaning that wound out. They're going to staple him closed. As well as they're going to try, the, oh, I just heard them as well. And there's going to be two options. They're going to maybe uh, put a collar around him. Maybe that might be possible just to kind of keep track of him so we don't have to really keep watch on him all the time uh, in the next uh, three, four days. Or else they're going to, if that doesn't go through, then um, of course they're going to put him back somewhere and then with some one or two kills and then they're going to have uh, somebody watching over him throughout the time for the next two, three days, you know, just to make sure that he recovers, making sure that, uh, you know, he gets nice and strong. So apparently his health looks much better body-wise um, compared to the other day when they first found him with the snare around him he has definitely gained some muscles and all that so that's good all right well we're gonna continue and we panda and myself we're gonna head back in there continue just observing and all that while we do that let's head over to Okokuyu in Namibia to see what's happening at that pan
as mentioned, we are not going anyway. Everyone, we are still here with Shadula and Nene. And she is now at the carcass having a little tug in a pool. Not much eating happening, to be honest with you. She's still doing quite a bit of work to get little bits of meat off. And Nene is just in front of us. He has a little bit of a bloody nose quite literally <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see he's laying down just in the spot behind the tree oh hello boy thanks for getting up you knew I was talking about you you can see his little little bit of red on the nose there is a vehicle that is going to come into the sighting so just so everyone's aware about that wow what a beautiful young male leopard oh if he lies down there i don't think we're going to be able to see him on the camera anyway at least we've got mom still there Tracy, you're 14 years old and you're saying, I think nice to see these leopards, if I'm not mistaken. But it is a beautiful sighting, Tracy, and it is lovely to see uh, mom and son. Nene really enjoys that spot there behind the termite mound. He's going back to it. He was there this morning. Now he's going back to lie down, I'm sure, in the shade. Just also want to tell this vehicle so they don't give him too much of a fright if they do decide to come around the back. And this is sort of our best gap at the moment with all things considered in the sunlight. So just want to listen out for the radio um, as these uh, other guides enter the sighting with their guests. Wow, look at those jaws working. Whew. That is very, very strong. I'm not sure if you can hear the crunching. Oh, wow. she's starting to expose the rib cage so she's actually pushing the skin down and she's using her connatural shears which is a very very sharp tooth at the back of her mouth to actually rip off some of the meat as well as her canines her big sort of sharp teeth that are in the front of the oh wow definitely is not necessarily even a young male impala that's quite a mature impala ram I'm going to pull forward maybe, maybe see it. yeah see if we can get a better view for you all also try and get out of the Sun Okay, there is a nice gap coming up here and Paul just tell me when is good for you okay there we go that's gonna be great Yeah. 
Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here on the junction of uh, Impala Plain uh, Road. Uh, can I continue as the uh, phone ring north? Yeah, FM, continue north up Zoe's. Um, you'll see the off-roading tracks. If you're coming from Philemon's Dip, then um, you can, the off-roading tracks will be on the left. Otherwise, if you're coming from the top junction south on Zoe's, then the, the off-roading tracks will be on the right. It's there. There are two big marudas and a termite mound in between. I think I'm far away lost. Uh, I'll you again. Uh, thank you. Copy. Sorry, there's just some chat on the radio. Um, Daniel, you want to know, I think, at what age do leopards learn how to climb trees? It's something that they actually have, uh, they sort of know how to do from a very young age. Um, I've seen very small cubs in trees from about three months old or so, I would say. Um, but they're already very agile when they're little, which just means they sort of, they like, they look just like a, a cat that you would have at home, they're capable of. Um, being very easy to move and jump up and down and, and, and climb up things and so little leopard cubs are already going up trees with mom from about three months old about it could be a little bit younger sometimes but they have sort of that innate ability um, to be able to climb up things She's getting a good meal in here, starting to, actually her belly is getting quite round as well, we can't really see it at the moment, but she has eaten more and more, mm, a lot more of this carcass is gone than it was this morning, <laughs> oh, she's up. And there is a car approaching, just so everyone knows. Again, she's doing this sort of covering up instinctual thing with her paws. Oh, she is on the move, everyone. So we're going to get going as well. All right, so we are going to head over to Okakuyo and have a look there at what's happening in Namibia while we try and follow Shodulu. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos, and many more perks. You'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature, while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
we have moved around to the other side of the carcass and followed these two cats who are now resting here. It is very likely that they may get up at some point and head back and we'll have to loop around again but I just thought they seem to both be resting here taking a chance. Mom's doing some grooming and it's so important for leopards to keep clean. It's one of the most important things that they do is keep themselves really really neat and tidy. And wow, what a way to spend our time in this part of the kids drive. Well, thank you so much to all the kitties who have joined us today. And what a way to end your show this afternoon. There Nene's up again, heading towards the carcass. So we're going to let him do that. He may come back again this way. Um, but should Lulu still here preening? We do have a nice view of him still though. That's good. And thank you so much for all the kids who did tune in and join us and send through their comments and your questions. We really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, I've got uh, audio of um, one station approaching. Yeah, I've got your visual. There is one Ingwe now on the Bamba. Um, and yes, we do hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend and we'll be back with uh, Kids Drive next week. But from myself and the team, thank you so much, kids. I really do hope that you enjoyed this leopard filled show this afternoon. This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to our afternoon sunset safari everyone and we are starting off right here with the Shadulu um, and it has been a um, wonderful wonderful start to the afternoon. My name is Amy and with me together this afternoon is of course Mpo and uh, we are giving the leopard the spotlight today and we've just been enjoying the kids show here and it has been the lighting is beautiful the carcass is just behind Shindulu in the bush willow we're now on the other side of the termite mound and uh, she hasn't hoisted the kill yet it's still very much there and maybe we'll see some action a little bit later on but now remember that this is a live and interactive show so please do make sure that you send through your comments and your questions to us we would love to hear from you And I know a lot of you are interested in um, the update on Maribs, but uh, we will head back to Cedric as soon as he says that he's got an update. So we are in communication with him. So please do not worry. As soon as we have information for you, we'll head over to Cedric and get that update. Um, but as mentioned, the vets say he is looking good. Um, still serious, seriously injured, but um, so far so good, which is great to hear that. 
but uh, they're actually busy I think at the moment working on him and as soon as there's an update from that Cedric will let us know but for now we are with two very healthy leopards which is wonderful um, Shadul is here in front of us Nen has moved off towards the kill on the other side um, so she's just enjoying a bit of shade here in the grass matriarch wannabe I don't know I honestly don't I, at this rate it doesn't look like it she seems very comfortable with the kill on the ground I just saw Nene's tail there briefly um, he might be lying down again on that side but um, it's possible there's a beautiful marula tree right here um, that she could use but clearly so far it's been okay they've covered up the scent really well I don't think the stomach is popped yet which is quite a vital sort of part of a leopard keeping its kill. Oh, there's the back of Nene. Oh, whoa! Look at that, everyone. Shoo. He may only be 15 months, but he is very, very strong. I'm taking a breath. That was a lot of effort there. This is amazing! Oh my word! I <laughs> believe we just saw that happen. That area that they had the kill in was just getting a little bit sort of exposed there. Now he's completely disappeared. There are some vehicles around, so we're just going to stay on Shadulu for now. You can see how that belly is panting a lot faster than it was this morning, for those of you who are watching. Oh, Nene's up. Can I come say hello to Mum? Oh, <laughs> that is so cute. Jackson, this has been the best beginning ever, 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 ever. And you can see those markings now behind the ears. Look at Nene compared to Mom. Okay, she's moving as well now but her ears are way more worn lots of notches out whereas his are still absolutely perfect much younger leopard her white is almost completely gone on the tips of his of, of her ears is heading back actually to where the carcass was I wonder if there's a bit of scent there or maybe little bits and pieces that he is still trying to cover up actually see that still that digging that scraping trying to cover up the scent of the carcass and as I was talking about this morning it really is what is so important for these leopards to remain undetected 
if a hyena gets a whiff of the stench of death or anything of a kill or anything like that they'll be here so quickly oh my word this lighting is just incredible oh he's going to be a magnificent male when he's fully grown Let's just wait a second here, Nadine, just to see what they do. This is just so special, a more wood. This is absolutely amazing. Shadil is heading back now. Oh, she was. Just in front of us. She's going to pop out there in front of you and Paul. And Nen has actually just gone down and stalking his mom. <laughs> Look, he might jump out. He might jump out. I don't know. Oh, I thought he was going to pounce. And that's all to do with, with these young leopards and practicing their skills. And eventually, very in a short time, before the end of the year, I think he's also going to be, you know, hunting and taking things down for himself if he hasn't already. And usually younger leopards start with smaller things, even if it's a spur file, a guinea file, something like that. All right, well, now that they've settled down again, let's head over to Cedric for an update. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I'm glad that you're having a fantastic time there with uh, Shudulu and Nene. And I'm just going to quickly give you another update on uh, Marips and what has been happening there in the operation or the surgical room. Um, well, the veterinary surgeon is still busy on Marips, of course. It's going to be a very long process. Um, he has got a bit of a fever, so his heart rate is a little bit high at the moment. Um, but other than that, they've got everything under control. And what they're busy doing now, at this point in time, what she's done, she's cleaned the wound out completely with, you know, all the different kind of uh, spirits and all that. Cleaned the wound out, and now she's actually kind of cut underneath the skin on both sides of the wound. She's cut underneath the skin, just to kind of give it a little bit of, I can say, elasticity. And then now she's bringing those two pieces of skin together. She's also kind of sewing the muscle first together, and now she's trying to sew the skin together. So it's a very long process. Um, so yes, this is still going to take for quite, well, it's going to take quite some time before uh, this is over. So done. What they're going to do, they're going to then send, put my lips back exactly where they got him uh, this afternoon, where he's been for the last few days. And being back that side is fantastic because, as he says, I uh, spoke to one of the guys and now, very important things. First of all, it's a very thick area, that drainage line. Lions were there at Biffleshook uh, Dam uh, two days, yesterday, a day before. 
they did not pick up on uh, Mareps at all. And it's so nice and thick. He's got big trees around there. He's got the Tamburti tree, as well as he's got that termite mound with that hole where he can go in. So he's got like little safety nets all over the show there, which is perfect and ideal for him. You don't want to go and put him in a place where he's completely um, confused on where he is and uh, he hasn't got any of that safety. So take him back to the same spot, put another impala in the tree again. Give him one or two extra uh, impalas. I know it's sad. We really thank you so much to the impalas for sacrificing themselves for this beautiful male leopard. Um, but yeah, that's what they're going to do. And put the impalas up there again, and then making sure that he's going to continue feeding, getting strong, keep eyes on him. Uh, it's going to be a long process, but you know, I guess Rome was not built in one day, and I'm sure my reps will pull through this whole ordeal with all of our support, with everybody's love from uh, from the homes or wherever you're watching from. And I think Panda and myself, we also, trust me, I've got like a uh, a lump in my throat. I've actually had a lump in my throat the entire day. Um, you know, I've had a few tears running down and all that, and. Uh, yeah, it is, it is what it is at the moment, but I am positive. I'm all crossing fingers that uh, he does well. So, yeah, that is uh, the update for now. And uh, I will keep you updated later on again. All right, while well, we're going to go back inside again and continue watching exactly the process, I think let's head over to the dam cam. And, uh, well, that is uh, Maripsa, or one of uh, Maripsa's favorite places to go and hunt for some catfish. Let's go and take a look. on safari.
welcome back everyone and here we are still in the same spot and I've just been loving spending time with Shadula and Nene and they've been moving a lot so we're gonna stay put for now and just let them do their thing they've been moving closer further away Nene moved the whole kill it's now behind Shadulu on her left hand side Nene is still covering up scent there and I think Shadulu has brought him up really really well he is going to be very successful I think he's got all the right instincts he's in such good condition Happy Red, it's a good question. It's impossible for me to, to give you a, a definite answer right now uh, because I don't know the future. But if he does disperse the usual way that uh, male leopards disperse, he probably won't ever see her again if he does go very far. But if he manages to, to stay under the radar for a while, maybe another year or two before he sort of is able to take on a territory and gain his strength and really become a, a mature male leopard who knows I mean Maruba is also in the area and um, he's a young male and uh, Mulwati and Tortoise Pan are still in the area as well so he's been able to sort of stick under the radar um, within very close to his mother's territory um, so you know we'll have to wait and see as to what happens but if you know if eventually let's say when in five six years time and he holds a territory of his own maybe he takes over a territory close by then he might run into his mother but if he decides to move off completely then probably won't see should do again interesting how active they've been actually you know you expect to sort of just find them and then they lying still but ever since we've arrived there's been a lot of movement a lot of activity Jelly B, yes, absolutely. It's been it's been wonderful. Um, and I was chatting about how it's so wonderful to be able to spend time and observe behavior and learn more about um, a mother leopard and a a male offspring and sort of that timeline and being able to be here with Wild Earth at Juma. We're actually witnessing that transitional period from when Nene is sort of fully dependent on mom and how he's going to become more and more independent. Um, in comparison to something like cheetahs, leopards are quite tolerant of, of the um, offspring, whereas a cheetah will sort of just one day decide, boom, I'm leaving my, my youngsters, and then sort of her three or four cubs that are of age will be left and she'll move off and leave them to fend for herself whereas leopards they really you know you associate with one another you see um, daughters associating with moms sons associating with moms still maybe trying to take a kill or something like that easily from her um, so we'll see what happens in the future here but Julie Mead it is wonderful to see mom and son together here on Juma And it's a beautiful time of day coming into golden hour. 
everything's just a glow. You can see the specks of sunlight on her back. Well, we are going to sit here with Shadulu C. Maybe we'll pull around to the other side. We'll just have a look, um, see what Nen is doing. But for now, you are going to go do some birding at the Juma Dam Camp. Cedric's probably going to fall that far.
hope everyone enjoyed that great go away bird and the squirrel at Jimadam. We've come around to the other side now, sort of back to the beginning. They're moving so much, we sort of back and forth around this termite mound. But here is Shudu from the front, just catching that beautiful golden light and catching some flies, it seems like. How beautiful is this? I have no idea where Nene is at the moment. I think he's found a quiet spot away from the hustle and bustle and has just laid down. <laughs> yes. Stalin. Uh, antique it is just oh and the light is catching her pale honey eyes this is the the beauty photographer's dream I think maybe the only thing that could top this is perhaps her being up a marula tree but uh, she's not she's not cooperating today she's happy on the ground so we'll take what we can get I did hear an elephant trumpet in the background. Maybe they're heading down towards Treehouse Dam, which is a little bit further south and east of us. looking at her with my binoculars and she is such a beautiful leopard. Ben, it really depends, honestly. Um, they can hoist them immediately, they can hoist them after a day, they can hoist them after an hour, there's no rules. Leopards really do do whatever they want, so whatever they're comfortable with and at this point she hasn't felt it necessary to hoist her kill. Um, uh, that there's no set, some, some leopards never hoist their kill and that's just what they choose to do. The hoisting is all about getting it away from potential threats, so most most of the time hyenas. And there is a vehicle approaching as well, so that is what she's just paying a little bit of attention to. everyone so just to let viewers who perhaps are joining us for the first time or not familiar with everything that's going on here at Juma at the moment um, it is quite a unique afternoon for us uh, both Cedric and I are, are out on Juma but Cedric is standing by um, if you can just hang on there's just a vehicle um, but Cedric is standing by with Myth Maribs, Maribe, a young male leopard who was caught in a snare and has quite a bad injury. Um, and so he's actually being treated because it was a snare, um, a man-made sort of problem or issue that, that, that happened to, to Maribe or injury. Um, the vets have gotten involved. So they are working on him at the moment, cleaning the wound, giving him antibiotics and helping make sure, stitching him up as well. And I am here with Shudulu and Nene. And so Cedric's standing by there getting updates for us. Um, so as he finds out more information, he is letting us know. And apparently Mirabe is doing well. He does have a serious wound that has cut quite deeply into his chest and around the back of his head and, and behind his um, front legs. 
but it is healing. Um, it just needs to, to be taken care of and cleaned and make sure that we avoid affection, infection. Are we just guarding in another vehicle there? Oh, the light is catching her eyes now. Wow, I love those eyes. They're so intense when they catch the light like that. So she's moved off slightly there, closer to the carcass. Hey, 40, you want to know if we know who um, uh, Nene's father is? I stand to be corrected, so Nadine, please jump in. I think it's Mulwati. Oh, okay. So apparently it's suspected that it's tortoise pan, but I think it would be one or the other. It makes sense for it to be TP, a TP male, because Shudulu often comes from the western side. So that makes a lot of sense. Nadine's just told me um, that Nen has been seen with tortoise pan quite a few times and there hasn't been any aggression. Now, usually with male leopards, that is something that, you know, two males, two females don't really tolerate each other um, and the males would generally want to push him out. So that would also play into that suspicion that he is the father. But unless a DNA test is taken, you can't say 100% for sure like we can with the mother of course because this cub has been seen growing up over the years or well, yeah and a bit <laughs> she's actually feeding there a little bit to apologize for the view everyone but she has gone into the that we Nene pulled the carcass, which is really deep and 
underneath that other bush willow. So luckily we can still see her, but she is feeding now. You can see the horns of the impala on the left hand side there. Oh, canine girl, I don't know. I think, I suppose there's a possibility, but in the study of leopards, leopard dynamics, social structure, um, I've never heard of that happening personally. Not to say that it hasn't ever happened. That would sort of be against the nature of an animal's instinct to, to mate and pass on genes. So if that male didn't ever leave mom, unless he mated with her i suppose but then the territorial male of that area um wouldn't really allow that but perhaps in an area where there is no territorial male or the male dies or something like that then a female's son becomes the territorial male in the area and then he would end up actually mating with his mother or the other females possibly so i don't think they would necessarily stay together as in you know side by side but possibly in the same area yes maybe that has happened before canine girl but it's not something i have actually heard of She is munching away now, really getting stuck into the rib cage there of this impala. those last few glimpses of the sun on her face. sit here with Shadula while she carries on feeding and you are going to head over for a scan around Juma Dam. We have an exciting announcement. Wild Earth is launching a YouTube membership program. For a nominal monthly fee, members get an ad-free channel, prioritized questions, early access to videos and many more perks. 
you'll get fun features like badges and emojis that'll make you stand out in the chat. YouTube memberships will help us to continue with our mission of connecting people with nature while giving you access to lots of our amazing content.
right, well, back again for another update about uh, Marips. And, uh, well, I'm sure you've been having a great time with uh, Amy and uh, Muscles and Paul. And I just want to, from Panda myself, we just want to give a huge uh, shout out to them uh, for really carrying the show this afternoon. While uh, Panda and myself, we are just sitting back here with. Uh, the veterinary, uh, the veterinary uh, crew, or I'm going to say uh, the uh, the group, the side, and um, you know, just to see exactly what's playing out. I'm just getting some information from them. What's going to be done with them? You know, um, how much longer and for the next uh, two, three days, what is the procedure? Yeah, what what what's going to happen? Um, but uh, at the moment, now quick update with him. His one side has been stitched up completely. Um, she's busy stitching up uh, his uh, uh, chest area, which is the deepest part. Um, this is the part where you can actually see his sternum, his uh, bone, uh, and his chest bone. And what is that busy doing now? She's trying to stitch all the muscles together, and then she's going to try and pull the, uh, his coat across as well to stitch that together. But it's a fantastic job at the moment. As I said, it's exactly the same veterinary surgeon as uh, uh, that actually looked after Tamangumi and stitched him up. So you know it's he's in fantastic fantastic uh, hands and uh, I also want to give a huge uh, shout out and a huge thank you to remembering uh, leopards from uh, Margot Ragga because Margot Ragga from remembering leopards um, she she donated um, pretty much all the medicine that's been happening here now with Marip she's donated uh, the money for um, pretty much uh, the the travel cost for the vets to come in here for all that kind of thing so a huge shout out to uh, remembering uh, leopards from Margot Ragged so yes but other than that it's looking good it's looking good I'm feeling very positive it's actually feeling I'm feeling more positive now compared to earlier um, just by looking at uh, what's been done on them and been listening to them as well talking about the whole situation and it seems like it's uh, it's more on a positive side than a negative side now so yeah, you know, <laughs> I still got a lump in my throat. I'm still kind of, you know, very kind of taken back about this, but uh, yeah. But anyway, while Panda and myself head back into the surgery room, uh, let's head over to Amy and all muscles and paw as they are sitting with Shudulu and Nene. Oh, we have repositioned, and Shudulu's just left the carcass and lied down, laying down. She's doing some grooming now. There's also a vehicle making their way into the sighting just so you are all aware for the noise and things. Been so lucky that for the most part they've actually been out in the open. They could hide away very much from us if they wanted to. In fact, Nene's disappeared. These must be somewhere around here, a little bit further away, deciding to just have a race where it's a bit quieter. And that cleaning and grooming is all about concealing their scent as well. <laughs> Honey badger, it is amazing. I've put it through its paces today. <laughs> but it has stood up to the task, to the test of the off-roading, which is fantastic. And just so smooth to drive, quiet, um, comfortable over all the bumps lovely you know, smooth clutch easy gear changes and all of that so it really is an absolute dream the only thing is and Paul's very far away from me usually on the short base Land Rovers he's a lot closer so our views are almost exactly the same now I sort of have to drive and check with him how the view is because his view is I mean for me right now should lose behind some leaves of the bush willow but for you it's perfect so we just have to adjust He's almost basically in the in the 
second row of where guests would normally be so uh, that is a small adjustment but the otherwise otherwise um, it has been lovely I'm very lucky to to drive but Cedric and I will swap around in a few days they will also have a chance on this vehicle and I'll go on to Wendy Hippo grunting in the distance, far distance. Ooh, Mercedes, you want to know how long until a leopard would have another cub? Um, basically, once her current cub has has um, gone independent, so. Um, the leopard's gestation is plus minus 100 days, so just over three months. And um, so it's a short amount of time, and you know, that, that she needs to be pregnant for. So I would say once Nen is sort of completely. on safari.
Alright everyone, well we have spent a wonderful bit of time here with Shadulu and Nene and what we're going to do now is actually leave these leopards and um, make our way over to check up on those black dam males and see what's happening that side. So we are going to send you off into a bit of a clip of lions hunting some buffalo on Juma while we make our way back onto the roads and drive across to the other side of the reserve. Being the more social of big cats, lion prides present a particular challenge. The lionesses leading these families often have many mouths to feed. In an effort to tackle this task, the Nkuhuma pride have become specialists. With these tawny residents of the Sabi Sands becoming synonymous with practice takedowns of one of the wild's most challenging prey species, buffalo. With their hefty horns and grumpy disposition, buffalo require a bit more planning and a whole lot of strength to take down. And they also aren't afraid to fight back. The lionesses of the Nkuhuma pride approach this risk with calculated caution. Even with their numbers and skill, taking down a buffalo is never an easy task. The presence of the resident coalition members is often more an intimidation tactic, with the females doing the lion's share of the work. The males ready themselves to gorge on the soon-to-be feast. These lions reap the reward of such a risk, getting much-needed nourishment for their growing pride. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
Lions are social animals, living in groups called prides. The Birmingham Pride currently reigns over the grasslands of the Timbavati Reserve, but are well known along the fringes of the Greater Kruger. This group has been growing their ranks, welcoming two extraordinarily rare additions to their pride. Two white lion cubs. Social play is critically important for young lions. It teaches them various life skills, reaffirms pride bonds, and it also helps these budding predators to practice their stalking and hunting skills. Although cute and cuddly now, with all this playful practice, we're convinced the youngsters of the Birmingham Pride will be quite the force to be reckoned with in the near future. Welcome back everyone. We just needed a little bit of time to get out of that sighting and now we are making our way towards where the male lions are. I have had confirmation that they are there so that's quite exciting. So we're just picking up the pace a little bit just to make sure we get there in time while there's a little bit of light. I'd love to have a look at them for you all without using infrared. So we're just gonna take a road heading towards the east and then on the other side of the reserve that's where we are heading to but what a wonderful afternoon so far i've really 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 been enjoying it and how awesome if we get to look at those lions again i haven't met these males yet so i'm really looking forward to meeting them Apparently they are rather impressive. This one, next one, uh, Trials Dam. This one. Okay. So I want to make sure I take all the right roads. I have gotten quite familiar with uh, the roads as I've been here, but I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm just checking with them, Paul. Yes, Terry, absolutely. Feline Friday is looking amazing. What a joy to drive around in this cruiser. And I'm sure Paul is very grateful as well. Because otherwise he'd be bumping about at the back there. <laughs> oh, 
But I believe you have been looking at some clips of lions and things like that. So it is great to give some other clips for you to be able to look. William, you want to know about lions coordinating a hunt? It is incredible. It's one of the things that amaze me about lions is the fact that they can coordinate a hunt so well. Sorry, there's just a branch in the road here, everybody. I need to move it out of the way. It's a bit large for the vehicle to go over. Um, it's one of those things with lions that really is so instinctual and they're able to do it incredibly well um, and communicate in ways that I'm not actually sure how they do it without words but they all know where they need to be and if you watch a, a, a pride of experienced lionesses it's quite the thing of beauty I think to see them all work together to take something down right we are passing treehouse dam at the moment still lovely and full so much water heading into the winter season which is really good news we're going straight across here and heading through to the uh, eastern side of the reserve All right, so for anyone who maybe is just tuning in or missed the update, we are heading towards the Black Dam males. They killed an Inyala, I think it was yesterday. Uh, Steve had a lot of vulture and hyena activity and we weren't quite sure what was going on. And I think this morning, Cedric had the males for the first time um, on that kill. And they were found. So that is where we're heading to. Important when you are as quickly that you still are very conscious of the road, of your passengers making sure you brake at the right times. You can, you can cover ground fast, you just need to be clever on how you do it. They're basically speed bumps, but um, they're known as, as bolsters. And um, there's elephant carcass here, eh? I think so. Um, and so you need that is Basically, Mpo will be flying in the sky if I don't break before I hit one of these bumps. I'm just going to quickly check the location every one of these lines just to make sure that I am heading to the correct place. I do apologize um, if there is any picture breakup, everyone. We are moving quite quickly and sometimes the signal does dip. is Earth Week and we'll be having several clips that are going to be featured throughout the drives next week to celebrate, celebrate not only Earth Day which is but also Earth Week so please make sure that you stay well tune in for those shows Also a reminder to all our viewers that on Monday and Tuesday we are going to be featuring two afternoon live drives which is very nice so just the afternoon just the sunset safaris we will be live for 
planet Earth Day. Alright, so now... Stations I've just turned on to Twin Dam is going to be turning on to Mamba shortly. There's a scrubber in the road that's just topped off. Oh, thanks, Canaan girl. Sorry, there's just an update on the radio. I don't want to miss anything about these lines. It is getting to that time of day where they could start moving. Hold on for the bumps. Mr. Brown Bear, you want to know the closest encounter I've had with a cat? It's probably on foot. We were tracking some lines. Oh, I see a vehicle ahead of us. I think we are coming into this line sighting now. And um, we were following the tracks and I just heard brrrr. I don't know how close I was to that line, but I'm guessing not more than a few meters. <laughs> and uh, we backtracked very quickly out of there. Alright, so I'm just going to slow down now that we're coming into the sighting. Hopefully we can show you these two male lights. There we go, there I can see one just under the bush. I'm going to move slightly forward and then we can get a view for you. Oh, I wonder, I think I'm just going to go off-road here. Or you just let me know when's good. Oh, the second one's lying at the back there. You can actually hear the crunching. Let's have a listen, everyone.
so glad that we're just managing to show you this without the infrared just to get the colors it's so so great to see there are so many flies on this lion that he actually looks gray and those are all flies everyone that is insane wow Thanks, Happy Brit. It's been great to just be able to go from one sighting to another. I mean, it's not like this every day. That is absolutely for sure. I've spent many a days on Juma where we just sort of bumble around and, and try and follow tracks, but there's just it's just not busy. But today it's all happening here. Uh, there's a spotlight here. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm actually just going to shine a bit of extra light. Yeah. See where and Paul wants it, like that. Mm. Can I actually shine? Look, maybe too much, eh? Hey? All right, so. While we continue watching this lion feed, let's head over to the Juma Dam Camp. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Welcome back everyone. We just had to cut away there so that Paul could go into infrared and that is why the screen is now in black and white. What's so amazing about infrared is that we don't have to actually have to shine a spotlight on these animals which is fantastic. So the artificial light does affect them to a degree. They have grown accustomed to it especially in the Sabi Sands 
many guides um, the vehicles do use white light to to help spotlight these animals while they're feeding but um, with the infrared it means that we can still show you it live without shining anything at all which is amazing this lion's now getting tucked into the neck of the signora that's really all that's left Oh, Pammy, sorry, I've forgotten to, to mention it, but his brother's just behind him, lying flat in the grass. I can see one paw. Well, I could see one paw. It's gotten a bit dark now, but um, yeah, he is, he is behind him, fl lying flat. doing some licking as well. The cat's tongue is extremely, uh, it's rough, it's extremely rough. It's almost like little knives, if you can imagine little blades, hooks of, of teeth on the actual um, tongue. And when they lick, they can actually lick off some of the meat as well. Oh, wow. Leading Tumor Station, it's a guy here from Torchwood. Uh, hi Grant, um, I'm on lock with the Ngala sighting of Mamba. There's one mover here and then I left one mover at the at the Ingwe sighting which is still running off Zoe's. I'm not sure if that's an open lock or not. great would it be if his brother got up and come and joined him that would be great and he's actually using those Modified molars, the con those connatial shears to tear off some meat. Amazon, yes, indeed, there's not much left at all. It's almost a little bit of a chew toy now, I think. They're really getting the last scraps off around the head and face. Absolutely, Maria. He's gorgeous. He's actually got quite a small mane. I do find that sometimes these males have a stunt, bit of stunted growth in their youth or something like that. Maybe his mane's still going to get larger, but I think it's his brother that has a really large black mane. Actually, sorry, I don't know if they are brothers. 
they just are a coalition they could be um, cousins Ooh, there's some real crunching going on now Mm, Shreyas, as you've asked that, I just heard a hyena howl in the background. They're around, but I don't think they're going to take any chances with two big male lions. Haven't seen any, haven't seen any signs of any either. But the stench of this is now getting quite strong, so I'm sure they should know that it's around. Um, apparently they were in the area yesterday, but with the lions here... They're not really going to stand a chance. So I don't think these these lines, they may stay here tonight, but there's every chance that they'll they'll be gone by the morning with how much is left of this carcass. But as long as there's still a bit of red meat around, so maybe actually tomorrow morning they'll still be here. But I think that's about it. Um, then by tomorrow evening, I think they'll move on to the next next place. Maybe not far from here. They are near Pan to get some water if they need it. Well, we're going to stay here for a little bit longer with the lions before we head back up to camp. And you are going to head over to Cedric for an update. Thank you so much, Amy. And uh, once again, thank you so much for keeping most of the show this afternoon. We really do appreciate it. And uh, <coughs> we left the area now. So what's happened now, quick update on uh, Marips, that young male leopard. Um, they stitched him all up. And they left the one side not stitched because it's not that deep. And just to give him more mobility in case he needs to climb a tree or do something, they don't want to stitch the entire area around because that's just going to pull out. Then, uh, so they just left the one area what is pretty much not that deep. It's just more of a, a skin that's been pulled away there. Um, but the right hand side has been stitched all up. Uh, down to the sternum or the breast area that's all been stitched up as well so what they're going to do they're busy they just loaded him onto the vehicle now the sabi sands and as well the the vets um, they're going to go out now to exactly where he's been for the last uh, few days and they're going to wake him up in that area and then they're going to remain there with him during the night time so they won't leave him unattended they will remain with him until he's all um, hundred percent and awake and the lever impala there for him as well a fresh impala and uh, yes it looks positive um, we spoke to the vet as well or the surgeon we spoke to the vets there and uh, they all seem that they're all very positive about this uh, more so than in the beginning so it seems like it's all panned out perfect for that young male leopard on Marips oh what a day it's been an emotional ride today. It's been a very, very emotional ride. But I think uh, the success behind it is, is pretty much right now where you can see how, how well these veterinaries uh, were, uh, worked on him today. And uh, a huge, huge, huge thanks to Wildscape Veterinary Service in Hootsprate. So that's Wildscape Veterinary Service in uh, Hootsprate. They were the vets, the interns and the vets that came out here and uh, assisted the surgeon with uh, the entire process. So a huge thanks to them. Once again, a huge thanks to Remembering Leopards with Margot Raggett, that's as well sponsored all the medication, um, the, the fuel costs, everything to get to this area to come and help this young male leopard. So yeah, <laughs> what a day and I'm just very happy that it's ending up like this now. You know, it is a sad situation, but I'm very happy that at least there's a positive, big, big uh, 
uh, like the positivity at the end, yeah. And also a big thank you for everyone that was involved. I think uh, thanks to all the viewers as well, just showing your, uh, your, your love for this uh, beautiful male leopard and for all the shout outs and all that. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, the vet, uh, vets do appreciate it. Um, oh, everybody, Sabi Sands appreciates it. So, you know, we all we all try. We all try and work together as a team. And what a team it was! What a team it was! I, they knew exactly what they were doing. There was no panic, nothing. They just got it. The only time there was panic, and that's when we darted or when the vet darted uh, Marips. And because you've got to find him. If you don't find him, then well, it's especially in the heat of the day. The vet says 20 minutes, you will overheat because you won't, can't pant anymore. You'll overheat and you'll actually die. Um, so luckily we found him after being darted, not too far from where he was darted. Um, I was in a bit of a panic because we couldn't find him because he ran off. I uh, got a fright due to the dart coming into the shoulder. So luckily we got him in the drainage line a little bit further up. And yeah, so yay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what a day. Wow. And thanks to Panda for just uh, bearing with all my stories and my nonsense for the, for the day. I think, I think, I think, I think Panda's like, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to hear my voice again for the next uh, week. So anyway. <laughs> and as well to James for coming, you know, meeting us up there where we were keeping watch for, you know, when he came out of the termite mound, James came in there as well and uh, brought us some uh, so re some refreshments and all that before he took off. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. everyone we have just moved around to look at the other male and he's just lifted up his head I heard something moving in the grass I wouldn't be surprised if it is I you know I'm just scanning here with the spotlight for 
unfortunately there is quite a big tree right in front of me so it may very well be coming from behind me oh i can hear a branch cracking which means elephant but that's more behind us it's definitely something in front of us here i'm sure it might be a hyena he can see far better than we can at night see that heavy panting just like should do earlier but his belly is far bigger a lot of pressure there on the diaphragm hi good evening yes uh, one station myself in lock here for the Ngala sighting off Mamba Road still running and then there was one more making its way to relocate um, on the Ingwes of Zoe's Nice that we got him to lift up his head. Oh, I can hear hippos. Oh, some birds have just flown. I wonder if there's not an elephant walking through the bush here. Hmm. Interesting. He's very aware, this male. His brother's not worried at all, or the other male's not worried at all, still feasting away behind him. The best sense we have now is our hearing. Wow, look at that. <laughs> sure, you can see all those flies on his back just like the other one. Kimberly Lopez, well now, wouldn't that be something? Although, oof, Mawati against these two, I'm not sure. I think Mawati would get the short end of the stick, but if he's super sneaky about it, maybe. I'm just making sure I'm scanning around in case there's any other visitors. We wouldn't want to miss a sight of that. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Wild Earth is turning 17 and we want to make the years count. 17 years of achievements, close encounters and special memories. He's got it, he's got it and he's straight up a tree. Come along as we reflect on our top 17 greatest moments. Here's to more years of connecting you to nature. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
you can see that these boys have seen a few sort of incidences as they've gone. Look at that nick on this one's ear. So there's a lot of stories they could tell as well. Tough life, that of a male lion. But they've done well to make this kill and they've had a good feast on it. So yeah, on the open clearing here, just south of our camp now, just taking a look, just having a bit of a, a, bit of a squiz here, see if we can pick up on any nocturnal animals for, for the last bit of the drive uh, tonight. Maybe a white-tailed mong mongoose or something around here, but uh, so far no luck. All right, uh, I think some of you are trying to ask about the fever. I mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, he had a little bit of a fever, yes. Uh, the surgeon said that he had a bit of a fever due to, you know, if, if he saw, you know, he, he was just a darted not long ago, a few days ago, when he, when he was first darted and all that. And on top of that, with that pain and all that and not feeling well and, um, you know, that kind of just gave him a little bit of a fever. Nothing serious at all. Nothing serious. She said, yeah, I can see his temperature. I'm oh, sorry, his heart rate was a little bit fast. Uh, and she just said, yeah, typical with... Uh, with animals, um, usually picking up on fever uh, during that time. So, you know what? And she's fantastic. Uh, she, <coughs> she's a fantastic surgeon. Wow. Uh, the way she was working, um, just, um, yeah, just a professionalism during this whole or ordeal. Actually, everybody's was just uh, phenomenal. So, yep. It's definitely a day that I don't really really want to remember because of the situation, but it's a day that I'm not going to forget. Ali, yes, uh, it was fantastic. It was very, we were very fortunate. Sorry, I just got some impalas on the clearing here. Yeah, we are very fortunate to, um, how can I say, spend uh, this kind of time with uh, Marips today and just to see exactly the whole process um, and, uh, you know, just listening to the professionals, uh, professionals of, uh, their, um, of their jobs and that. And it was fantastic just to pick up on all the different scenarios and why they don't want to do this and why they want to do that. So, yes, it was uh, you know, something phenomenal today. Well, we are going to just sit here. We've got, uh, looks like a young male impala, a few male males. We started, like Pando was telling me this morning, it was actually his first time hearing the impalas starting to grunt and snort and chase each other around and all that. So you can just see that the rutting season for these males, slowly but surely it's starting up here now and uh, trying to see who's going to be more dominant in the bachelor herds and we can actually pick up on a harem of uh, females. Oh, my tummy is a growling. <coughs> I think Panda and myself, we are, when we get back to camp, I think we're going to be the first ones in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was a long day, but a very interesting day. And I will do this day, I will do this over and over and over if I have to. Francois, yeah, they'll rut in, uh, in the middle of the night, they'll still chase each other around. Seen it, heard it, so yes, there's no, there's no stopping them. 
once they start, yep, they... It was good to also just catch up with old Tristan Dix as well. So he was also there with us this afternoon. I just had a good old chat to him about uh, about what has been happening around here, as well as old Marips's, uh, Marips's situation and what does he think about it. So, you know, and always nice just to and see what he says and uh, he's also not happy he also is he was telling me as well today he had to, uh, that's why he came through you know I mean, he loves my reps and uh he also he had a, a very like a heavy heart uh, today when he had to make his way here and to see him in that state so but yeah We've got some nice footage of him now, and I'm sure we will share it with uh, a lot of you and all that, and exactly how this whole procedure worked from beginning uh, to till the end. Unfortunately, we did not go to the wake up because as I say, I'm um, going to the wake up sometimes at night time, we just want to maybe put one or two vehicles in. We do not want to, um, how can I say, put too much attention on him in that area while he's waking up. But uh, the Sabi Sands will still stay with him. But yeah, as I said, we got great footage of uh, the whole, the whole procedure today, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we will be sharing that. Oh yes, Nadine, of course. I think I will sleep way better tonight after, you know, what I saw today and um, after, you know, listening to uh, the vets, um, you know, way more positive, way more positive. So, and I will definitely have a good night's rest. But we will, care. We, like the Sabi Sands asked us, so we will uh, keep on uh, checking up on him. We, they do want us to go there now and again. Um, unfortunately, you know, I don't, I won't, uh, I think we will have to maybe just close it off for a few of the people and all that. Well, for, not few of the people, but for, uh, you know, people that's coming in with guests and all that. Because, you know, at the end of the day, the, uh, an injured leopard at that time, you know, you do not want to, go and start screaming around where the you know where the um, leopard is you never know how that leopard's going to react it's it's injured it's sore you know it might just turn so yeah it's uh so what we will do we'll just go and pop in there um just to quickly double check like tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon just double check he's there okay good he's still good and we'll move on and um yeah but yes what a day. And once again, thanks to Amy and Paul for the day. Yeah. Well, what happened to, sorry Nadine, what happened to Shadulu and Nene? I haven't even heard anything today. I see I've been off, off uh, comms for most of the day due to being in the operation room there with, with a young male leopard there. Didn't Nadine say anything? What did she say? Oh, okay. So they did not try to voice the kill. No, they didn't. Oh, they didn't. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why I'm not picking up on what Nadine's saying. My comms is not working. All right. So she didn't, oh, that's not great. But anyway. Oh, they did not voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you to Panda to for telling me that. So thanks, Panda. <laughs> I know, but Nadine started shouting in my ears again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us on our sunset safari uh, this afternoon. It has been, uh, it's, a, it's been a tough day and all that, but uh, yeah, great sightings with uh, with Shudulu and Nene. And there goes Nadine shouting in my ears again. And uh, yes, but please make sure that you do join us on our sunrise safari tomorrow morning. It's Saturday, Cat Day. 
and I'm hoping that we are going to get fi or find some amazing stuff for everybody. And uh, well, I think I'm going to go for Shadulu and Nene tomorrow morning because I feel that that's going to be the best thing. But anyway, for us to kind of enjoy a nice little static sighting. From the Wild Earths team, have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night. Uh -huh.